Hello, my fellow hunters. Today we discuss Malfestio, the nocturnal bird. I I feel like they could have given it like it's so beautiful and unique and majestic, and I want its babies. And what did I just say? But it's just the nocturnal bird. <sighs> but he is just magnificent. Oh, what a pretty creature. Let's talk. By far and away my favorite bird wife, and indeed a member of my top five monsters of all time, Malfestio the Jester Owl. Now, yeah, obviously, on the surface, superficially, it is just as the owl do, and indeed has a lot of characteristics that it shares with them. Such as eyeballs that are nearly immobile in their sockets, which is why it does the twisty head, I see you. There is no sneaking up on this incredibly sensitive creature. It's hearing absolutely flawless. The slightest rustle from a prey deep in the forest might as well be holding up a sign and yelling, Here! Eat me! I want to die! And then Malfestio basically is like, all right, and he flies off ever so silently, the feathers in his wings angled in such a way that he slices through the air like a hot sodden shield through mufa butter. And this means that they do not know what is happening until his claws have already sunk deep into their flesh. Owls in real life do indeed fly near almost imperceptibly silently, and Malfestio is proud to bear this trait too. God, owls are such good hunters. Like, I love lizards, right? I, I do. But just below that, owls, man. They're just, they're such specialized, deadly fucking predators. I just, oh my God. Ah, yeah, probably goes some way of explaining why I like Malfestio so much, honestly. I would love to have a pet one if it wasn't for the razor sharp talons and the throwing up of balls of the bones of their victims. So, nocturnal indeed, and during the day, fast asleep at the tops of trees to avoid any, well, would-be ground dwellers. In fact, honestly, this works rather well against unprepared hunters. Wake the fuck up! Come on, please! Let me kill your sexy self! It's a powerful flyer then, on top of being silent, its wings beating with tremendous force, and it can be agile and as quick as the best of them. Its smaller frame allows it to venture in places that the larger wyverns simply cannot. But past flying, its wings hide a deadly secret, sheathed within them, folded and hidden away when calmness is in its heart are blades. Lengths of similarly coloured feathers sharpened to a razor point used to scythe away would-be aggressors. When an enraged state, they will deploy, fanning outwards in a true glorious visage before reaping in a scything arc, cleaving all in front, in twain. Despite primarily being covered by plumage of brilliant hues of blue and gold, and those two specifically, it does have scales upon its feet. Its feet zygodactyl in nature for gripping thoroughly. Two toes forward, two toes back, they lock together in deadly vice. It is powerfully strong, able to carry prey that dwarf even itself, able to combine with its wings to propel into a kick that not only shears through armor, sends hunters spiraling in pain as they are flung across the battlefield, adorned with slight red plumage akin to war paints, and contrasted so beautifully in the white of its face, angled inwards and used to catch the sound waves as it becomes a natural radar dish, pinpointing everything in its environment with such precise precision. Precise precision. Preci I can't. I can't say my word. Precise precision. But even then, that's essentially the same word twice. Look, he's gonna know where you are. 
His horns of azure plumage are there for both intimidation purposes and to attract mates to form a glorious crest atop this jester's head. The larger they are, the more worthy he is in courtship. The wings themselves, then, are mysterious in their pulsing patterns. Never quite still, the feathers rustling ever so much back and forth gently, preparing one of his most deadly weapons. To lose yourself into a Malfestio's wing is to know true peace, true beauty. To be inspired of a glorious slumber that you will never wake from. One should never look for too long at that glowing. Mm, I, everything is so wonderful. Ah. Wait, oh, 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 oh God! Oh, oh, see, don't, don't, don't do it, guys! It's so, so, so pretty, but it's so dangerous. What he can do, though, is detach these tiny feathers of such brilliant hue into the air, where they will quickly disintegrate into sparkling fairy dust, that he can then, with delicately controlled wing beats, send spiralling in a tunnel of brilliant blue that should it pass over you, well, you will breathe it in, and fatigue will grip you, your strength sap and a slumber your only destination. But this is not all. His slight orange scales adorning his legs can be detached too. They also break apart in the air and form great clouds of bursting orange light floating so gently on the breeze. Though should this enter your system, your mind will grow confused, unsure of itself, unsteady. Your left becomes your right. You are disoriented beyond compare, and you must wander around lost in strangled thoughts, as you are now easy pickings for the Malfestio before you. Malfestio can be found anywhere thick with tree and foliage, both for making its nest and for its preferred prey. Though it cannot hold its own against the more powerful wyverns, Nagakuga competes for the treetops it likes to call its home. More often than not, though, a sleep or a confusion and a quick flap of its wings, and it is gone to safety. It is a trickster, a bag of abilities that it can always pull from, an arsenal of weapons to deploy at any time. It is very clever. It can be led to anger, where it will become a little bit more direct in its approach, but this is very much the rogue of Monster Hunter, able to do whatever it can to cheaply win the fight while looking dazzling in the process. There is nary a more combined, beautiful, yet terrifying sight of a Malfestio roaring its defiance. They are birds like none other, and they are by far and away the best bird wyvern. If you disagree, then I guess you're welcome to that wrong opinion, but you need to look hard at yourself and, and try and understand where your values truly lie. Its tail then completes the jester look, extending out into a three prong, like a fancy set of coattails, and again adorned with just, <laughs> it just looks so good. It really, really does look so good. And when it enrages the swap, the eyes flaring up, ah. Oh. Oh, God. Look, I'll admit, there's not a lot of lore to Malfestio. He works as he works. He's got some lovely abilities in combat. He is incredibly resilient, trying everything and anything, from swooping sights to fierce oh, hits shit. to all of his tricks to somehow having the ability to expand his body into a ball? Boom, boom, boom. Which I love so much. And... Uh, Really, he's a joy to fight. You never know quite what you're going to have to deal with next. And just, just top to tail, right? He is based on a wonderful animal, an already fascinating one. He is made up to look incredible. He is packed with fun abilities to deal with. The confusion mechanic can be annoying, but, you know, it is uniquely something he brought to the table. And just generally, everything about him is exceptional. It's why he's one of my favorite monsters, and I knew I couldn't not give him a lore video, even if I'm probably quite alone in just how much 
much. I absolutely love him. And, uh, well, it doesn't stop there, does it? Because there is a deviant. The Night Cloak Malfestio. Oh, this guy. His wings shift from the azure to the crimson, and he looks all the more intimidating for it, larger, more powerful in every way, able to now fire wind blades infused with his confusion pollen, the scales rotating round as they form gusts, shredding through anything they catch, ripping through trees and rocks like they were not there. It has golden scales now on the edges of its wings, its blades enhanced and hardened, and they really are just inexorable in their deadliness, and its tail now four-pointed and taking on the form of a claw. But of course, the main factor here, what we care about, is the invisibility. Scattering a new type of scale that it has grown, a mutation at birth, well, it can use it to refract the light around it, interacting with its own plumage to hide it from sight. Essentially, like grabbing a handful of glitter, throwing it over yourself, and while it's still floating around in the air, no one can see you because you're wearing a special glitter reflection suit. Yes, yeah, science! Right, it's not scientific, but it gets the job done and lets you throw glitter everywhere, which I guess is always a, um... A bonus? So this guy really punches up a notch when it comes to the weight class. He can handle an Agakuga with ease, Tetsu Cabras are snacks, he'll even fight off a Glavinus should the mood strike. And now it also gains its signature melee attack, able to absolutely catapult itself into enemies and running them through like they were made of tissue paper. <laughs> And it can also steal. Yep, it is very intelligent. It knows what hunters do, knows the items that help them so, and will try and specifically target the healing potions strung to their belts. Ooh. It is said to have a demonic nature, which is actually where Nightcloak comes from, not the invisibility, which you would imagine is actually it is. But it is known to be the devil of the forest, the evil trickster in the night, luring you before sending you to slumber and tearing out your heart. Oh, I love the Night Cloak. I really do. I love Malfestio. I really do. And my word, do we need him in world? Imagine him flittering between the trees in Iceborne. Somehow I doubt that cross monsters are going to be introduced really well ever in the World Onward series, but I really want it to be so. He's so just unique and diverse. He adds such a new dimension by himself, a whole new mechanic, and a magical new you land for a magical bird is the place to be. He is a bird wyvern, but very unique in how he is structured, literally like a bird, and it, oh, I just think the new world hunters would adore him. They really, really would, and I just gotta see him in glorious, glorious world's aesthetic. I really, really do. He would fit lovely for the most part. He sinks in quite nicely into a natural backdrop. The bright plumage is definitely standout, but nothing crazy. Just imagining him perching high and flying high in the ancient forest, even if it's not a new Icebawn map, is just lovely. And he really would fit seamlessly into the ecosystem. And really, he could get some lovely story beats as we continue exploring. I spawn. Either way, guys, let me know what you think of him. Like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more, and I will see you soon. A good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo, but I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kinda relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song, and don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.